Hello friends, uh, let us learn today about uh, another nematode which remains in intestine that is strong alloyed stercoralis. We can find this worm worldwide, uh, so geographical distribution is worldwide. Habitat, uh, it remains in small intestine and especially in duodenum and jejunum mucosa. Morphology, uh, it has uh, adult worms, uh, eggs and larval forms. So let us first see about adult worms. Uh, sexes are separate, so male and female worm both are seen. Uh, both are hardly visible to naked eye. They are very uh, small in size. Uh, they have a cylindrical muscular esophagus that is an entire third of the body and posterior third of the body has uh, intestine. So the anus opens uh, mid-ventrally uh, and posterior extremity is extremely pointed. The vulval opening is at the junction of middle and posterior thirds of the body and we can see paired genitals at right angles from the vulva. Uh, but the important information is that female is ovoviviparous. This female will release eggs which has already embryo inside it and as soon as it releases the egg, this embryo will come out that is known as ovoviviparous. Male worms, as I already told you, that uh, in nematodes, mostly male worms, they are shorter but broader than the female worms. Uh, they have a conspicuous buccal cavity. They do not have any penetration power, so they remain inside the lumen of uh, small intestine. The eggs, uh, they are uh, thin-shelled, transparent, oval. Uh, but we cannot see them because as soon as uh, they are laid, uh, the rapidity from larva will start hatching out. So it is the larva and not the eggs which are usually found in human feces. Now these larval forms, uh, initially they are rapidity from larva but later on it will convert to filary form larva. The difference between this is that, that this rapidity from larva it is a shorter one and its posterior end it is uh, dilated uh, like a bulb and the esophagus is also dilated here the esophagus is uh, cylindrical right uh, this is the diagnostic stage that means this is the worm that you can see in the stool uh, while this is the infective stage this is the worm which will enter into the human body Life cycle, there is uh, no intermediate host, whatever you call it, there is only one host that is human beings. Another important thing that rest of the nematodes also requires that uh, only one host is there. But change of host is always required uh, from man to man uh, for survival of the parasite. But that is also not needed here because this worm can cause auto infection so only one host it can survive due to hyper infection or auto infection so how this uh, parasite enters our body so we know that the infective form is this filary form larva and it will penetrate the skin when we walk barefooted on a fecally contaminated uh, soil then this larva will enter into the venous circulation go to the right side of heart then go to the pulmonary capillaries and reach the lungs uh, uh, and from there it will enter into bronchi, trachea, larynx, epiglottis again swallowed back and enter into the intestinal tract here it goes to duodenum and jejunum where it becomes adult worm and the female and male worms are found the female now because she is oviviparous uh, she will ovipose it there and rapidity from larva will hatch out immediately and that's that is released into the environment which will become filary form larva as we know that male worms uh, they do not invade the tissue and therefore you can see them in feces 
sometimes there is also controversy regarding male worms in uh, strong adult sarcoralis some consider that females are parthenogenic uh, that means they can uh, themselves uh, are capable of giving rise to uh, the birth of uh, larval forms without help of male fertilization so to understand better this life cycle i have made a diagram so let us start with uh, the first thing that is the filary form larva which is shown here it enters this skin it penetrates the skin it will enter into the venous circulation it will go towards the right side of heart and from right side of heart it will enter into the pulmonary capillaries from pulmonary capillaries it will enter into the lung alveoli then from trachea bronchi larynx crossing the epiglottis it will go back to the uh, esophagus and swell out back then it will reach the small intestine where mainly the female worm uh, will uh, be fertilized or if she is parthenogenic uh, she will give rise to the eggs uh, which have this embryo because she is ovoviviparous this embryo uh, will hatch out immediately into the form larva now this form larva uh, has few courses that it can take either it can cause auto infection and it converts into form larva which will cause uh, immediately infection back into the intestine and that's how it will go the second thing it will go to the environment uh, it will develop into adult form again again female will give rise to the eggs again rebidity form will be hatched and it will convert into filary form larva or directly this rebidity form will convert into filary form larva so i consider it that there are three cycles one is direct cycle indirect cycle and auto infection in auto infection and direct cycle the rebidity form converts into filary form larva in auto infection it will this filary form will enter into the intestinal mucosa and becomes the adult worm again uh, while uh, in direct cycle it will go to the environment become filary form and then it will penetrate the skin while in case of indirect cycle the first convert into adult worms again eggs are laid again rebidity form and again filary form larva will be formed the pathogenicity is known as strong ileadesis uh, it causes skin lesions at the site of entry of filary form larva it is basically an articarial rash when the filary form larva migrates to lung it can cause pulmonary lesion like hemorrhages in alveoli bronchopneumonia uh, you can see when you see the field uh, migrating into the lungs and in intestine when larva reaches and develop into adult worms and due to mechanical movement of female parasite it may cause uh, intestinal diarrhea with uh, blood and mucus that is basically dysentery you can say Eosinophilia and moderate leukocytosis can be seen on peripheral blood smears. There is one thing which it causes known as hyperinfective syndrome, especially in immunocompromised patients like AIDS patient, uh, where massive infection will happen and it may result into severe diarrhea, malabsorption, peritonitis and disseminated infection like meningitis and brain abscesses will be seen. Some people uh, established that the strong alloids has gram negative bacteria on their uh, surface, especially this filary form larva. So once it enters into the blood, along with it, this gram negative bacteremia will also happen. So how we can diagnose this? Uh, now we can show the rabidity form larva in freshly passed stool. In sputum, we can show filary form larva. Uh, in duodenal washings uh, or in jejunal biopsy, also we can show 
Rhabditiform larva or adult worm. So this is the Rhabditiform larva which is found in wet mount of uh, stool. This is the Filariform larva we have found in sputum. Eosinophilia is there. Antibody or serology can be possible, but uh, it is non-specific. Treatment: thiabendazole, albendazole, or mavendazole. Ivermectin can also be added. Profile access: How we can prevent this? So first, attack the adult parasite. Treat the carriers and disease process simultaneously. Uh, attack on larva. Uh, prevention of soil pollution by control of sewage disposal and disinfection of feces or soil. And personally, we can wear shoes or gloves <coughs> while working or walking. So if you like this video, uh, do subscribe to our channels for regular update of videos. Share this video, like this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, do ask me.